that's a big battery. Hey guys, today we have a 24 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery to take a look at. Now you may be thinking this battery looks familiar and that's because it is. This battery is from Red Odo, which is previously known as Zooms. Zooms had a great reputation for providing a quality battery at the right price. This is the largest battery in this case style we've taken a look at on this channel. It will be interesting to see how it's built inside, if it's you know, any different from the 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries, or if they simply crammed in more cells. And at this capacity, this battery is over 5,000 watt hours or five kilowatt hours of power. That's a lot of power for one battery. So this battery measures 20 and a half inches in length, eight and a half inches in height, and 10 and a half inches in depth. And it weighs in just over 85 pounds, so it is quite a beefy battery. So taking a look at the front, it's pretty much exactly the same as the Zoom's battery was, just with the new brand name, Red Odo. Uh, 25.6 volts, nominal voltage, 200 amp hours, as we've already stated. Uh, so taking a look at the top, we have the same uh, epoxy style terminals that we see on most of these batteries. These are M8 bolts. Additionally, we have a serial number, appears to be a serial number there. Now it did come with four bolts here of the same length. I'm not sure why they're providing, you know, so many bolts of the same length, but I've seen that a few times now. Uh, and we have the standard plastic terminal covers for added safety. And we've also got the same uh, plastic handle with nylon strap carry handles here. And I was concerned when I picked this up at first due to the weight, but they do appear to be sufficiently designed to carry. So I've carried around quite a bit with those straps and I haven't had any problems. Uh, so taking a look at the documentation we got, we do have a quick start card. It's got a few steps here on unpacking your battery, a little bit on safety. It's good to cover your terminals while you're working on it. Um, I always use insulative gloves and I typically recommend using safety glasses as well. And it can be mounted in any direction other than upside down. That's one question I do get asked quite a bit. Product manual goes into a little more detail. Uh, I did accidentally cut it when I was opening the box, so it didn't come like that. That was my bad here. The manual is very well laid out. They have great, great illustrations to show how to set things up. Uh, however, there are some spelling and grammatical mistakes. Not really a big deal. You can still tell what's going on. Uh, so here are the battery specifications, 200 amp hours. Charge voltage recommended charge is 40 amps. The maximum continuous charge and discharge, 200 amps. Max discharge is 400 amps for up to five seconds. So that's your peak rating. And you can charge it down to zero degrees Celsius. This battery does not advertise having low temperature protection uh, and their 100 amp hour that I reviewed previously did not. So I'm not expecting it to. Slight inconsistency I did notice over here is, uh, where was it? It does say the battery needs to be upright with the bolts facing up. Then it says not to mount it upside down. And then it says to ask them if you're going to mount it on the side. So, so you can connect a max of two of these in series for a 48 volt battery. And you can connect up to four of them in parallel for an 800 amp hour battery. So there's quite a few pages here explaining these series in paralleling steps. And this battery has completed charging. I use the same Ames charger here. This is for lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the cool thing about this charger is it does both 12 and 24 volt. For the capacity test, since this is a 24 volt battery, we've had to break out the MPP solar inverter. This is an LV2424-MSD. On a 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery, a 0.2 C rate will be approximately 1000, 1024, I think it was, watts. So I'm going to use this standard space heater I've used in other tests and running this on low should put about 970 watts on the battery, which is pretty close to a 0.2 C rate. And we are discharging. We're at approximately 965 watts. You see it's still climbing a little bit as that element warms up. All right, so our test has concluded. We came in at 204.4 amp hours. Uh, so that's almost five amp hours over its rated capacity. Additionally, uh, I think the inverter shut down before the BMS and the battery. Unfortunately, we are still reading 21 volts here on the display. However, I don't have any additional 24 volt loads uh, that will allow me to draw this down any further at the moment. So uh, I'll have to get like a heating element or something for future 24 volt videos. Battery! I was actually able to get this battery apart without damaging any part of the lip anywhere on this case. All right, so taking a look inside, this is a very simple layout. We've got our eight cells, our BMS, and then we've got our conductors that go to the positive and negative post. And what we have here is six number 10 wires going to two separate lugs, and there's three in the top and three in the bottom of this BMS. Additionally, we have six number 10s coming off the main negative of the battery going into the BMS. And for our positive here, we have a pair of number six wires going from the main positive post of the battery up until the terminal. 
All of this wiring is silicone insulated, meaning it has a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. I also see we have a thermal sensor here on the battery. I do not believe that's a temperature sensor. It does appear to be a thermal switch based on the look of it. So that's going to be for high temperature protection, not low temperature protection. So this does appear to be their own brand BMS. And I do see it says 8S and 200 amps down in there. Um, I did notice the wires are soldered onto the uh, circuit board. I don't particularly like soldering, especially in high current applications like this. Uh, however, the soldering doesn't appear to be that bad. We've seen some batteries before where it's just like a giant goop and it's not adhered correctly. Uh, this soldering all looks acceptable in my opinion. So one thing that immediately came to my mind as I was pulling this out is that the battery was on its side while the battery was oriented upward. So the documentation stated the battery could not be upside down per the posts of the actual case, but one of the side orientations would actually have these terminals facing down and that is not good. So um, if you are going to mount these sideways, I do recommend you follow their advice and contact them first. It's just so they can explain to you which orientations exactly are and are not acceptable. I did notice immediately that these are GFB cells on the top here. And here's a shot of the QR code if you're interested. They do say 206 amp hours on the cell. Uh, so I'm guessing we would have seen two more amp hours at least had we run the battery the entire way down to low voltage disconnect. But uh, that inverter I used, unfortunately, would not allow me to do so. All right, so these cells are laser welded together. The laser welds do look great. They are very well done. Balance leads are individually numbered. I see B5, there's B4. Wires are nicely routed up at the center of the battery. Then they come out and converge down here. On the main negative and positive end here, we have a welded on L bracket. Um, and you can see there's a fairly large size bolt. It looks like an M8 going in there. So we've got our two ring terminals and then we have our balance lead. Now I did notice this on the 100 amp hour battery as well is that they put the balance lead between the terminal plate and the ring terminals. And I would always expect these ring terminals to be in direct contact with this plate, the main uh, positive or the main negative. Um, but I guess as long as this wire, as long as this ring terminal has enough surface area, you know, to pass the current through, I guess it's not a problem. It just looks, you know, odd in my personal opinion. Um, I'm not an engineer, but, uh, so looking at the BMS here, I did remove this uh, thermal switch and it does say 75 degrees Celsius on it. So that does prove that this is not an actual temperature sensor. It's a thermal switch. On the bottom here, we can see the three additional conductors for the P minus and the B minus. This is a double layer PCB actually. So they're the uh, FETs, they have some FETs on the bottom and some FETs on the top, which is interesting. This is an aluminum heatsink as we would expect here. All right, there is a super tiny part number on there. It says, 3W8B5618. And it also says CRSS052N08N. That's the transistor information if you are curious. Uh, there's not much else to see on here. It's a very simple BMS. Taking a look at the actual cells themselves, there are separations between them. It's not foam. It looks like, I don't know, paper or maybe some sort of plastic, but they are insulated from one another. Uh, we do have two of these, I guess they're nylon straps, top and bottom. Um, they do appear to be very straight. I don't see any bloating, anything like that. However, it does look to me like the bottom of the cell is a bit wider than the top. So let's just measure that and see what we got here. 17 and 1 8 inch. And at the top, we have 17 and 1 16 inch. So they are about the same top to bottom. The bottom is maybe a 16th of an inch, a little bit wider. All right, for the temperature protection test, again, this does not advertise having low temperature protection. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure it doesn't, but we always want to test it just to be sure. You can see we're charging at 10 amps here. Going to hit it with the uh, free spray here like usual. All right, the sensor is nice and frosty and we are still charging. Next, we'll test the high temperature protection with this heat gun. And you see we shut down, we have stopped charging. So uh, the high temperature protection does work. All right, so there we go. The Red Odo 24 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is built very well, um, considering it is a more budget friendly battery. Uh, we have GFP cells that will likely last a long time. We have their own BMS. This is a very, very basic BMS, but it does what it needs to. Uh, the only thing it does not have that would make this battery absolutely perfect, in my opinion, is a low temperature charge protection. 
So if you're in a climate or you're going to use this in an area where you do see temperatures below freezing, either put the battery in a conditioned space somewhere or uh, you know an inverter or charge controller that can somehow determine temperature. Otherwise, I think it is a great battery. So these batteries retail for $1,449. They did give me an $80 coupon to share with you guys. You can find that down in the video description along with a link to where you can find more information on this battery or purchase one if you so choose. That coupon will bring it down to $1,369. They do ship free, however, you do have to pay your local sales tax, so that may uh, bring it up a little bit more depending on where you live. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments you may have. Please hit that like button before you go. It makes a big difference to the video and to the channel. Uh, and thanks for watching.